Shiki Jitsu. We're going to talk about another another live action by Anno. Last mm-hmm. week uh, we talked about uh, Cutie Honey, which came out in 2004. While while this one came out uh, back in 2000. Um, yes. Yeah, so this one is in between, like his early works in animation and <laughs> Cutie Honey. Um, I, I, it's it's still um, it's still after um, Eva, so yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, it's, so it's um, I think b- before this, the only thing which he had done was um, Love and Pop, which um, mm-hmm. which I and um, Fahrenheit and Heraclius did a stream about. Um, so the the thing about that movie is that it's shot, um, like. Um, it's shot with camcorders, I guess you could say, small hand handheld um, cameras from mm-hmm. v- weird angles, um, like like it, like like it's an anime, <laughs> an anime or something. Uh, but but of course, by if, if you use uh, uh, camcorders, the quality um, and of the course, aspect yeah. and the aspect ratio of the um, film is going to be smaller and. Uh, from what little I could find, um, apparently when Anno uh, made this movie, he was excited about uh, using um, a 35 millimeter camera for the first time uh, for this movie. Hmm. Um, on the other hand, uh, you don't get that many weird um, camera angles and whatnot here. Um, there are a few cool shots, I must say, and when they go on the rail and then they stop in that sort of abandoned district, and there are those strange camera movements following them around, almost like if they brought another another person with them to follow them around, it's kind of nice. Yeah, the, the district, by the way, the, the town is um, uh, Hideakiano's, uh, how do you say, childhood? Um, mm-hmm. basically where he used to be before um, before he moved to Osaka to go to university. Mm-hmm. Um, where, sort of like his birthplace. Where, birthplace, mm-hmm. essentially, yeah. Um, and um, the, the, from what I could gather, by the time that um, I guess he came back, it, it, it had sort of become a lot um, less busy, uh, like... Um, Sort of a not exactly abandoned. Uh, yeah, but you can feel that it started to turn into sort of a ghost town. There are a lot of buildings were abandoned or condemned, and they even show that there is an old route that is not used anymore. A lot of the one of the focal points of the movie is the railways, and you can see that a lot of them are abandoned and not in use anymore. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess um, when compared to Cutie Honey, the the one we talked about last time, um, and and for that matter, Love and Pop, um, there's less bad CG, uh, CGI, <laughs> yeah. but, but 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 there's less um, CGI in general. I I think there's one weird sequence, uh, where like um, uh, the female main character protagonist, um. Uh, is standing and there are two trains. Um, yes, my it's used in a since it's more like seen inside their mind. You can sort of excuse the CGI not being really that good. Yeah, yeah, and and it's pr- pretty much just just that. If I if I recall, mm-hmm. there are a couple of scenes when she uh, she remembers some of the past trauma of her youth, and there is a blend of her. And like CGI that they're using animation, but it's clearly mixed with CGI. Yeah. Um. So the main. Uh, okay. So the characters. Do we have any names? Uh, I think the only one we hear the name at one point is the director. I forgot the name, but they say the name when he answers the phone. So um, yeah, since since we we don't know their names, let's just call them um, by the actors. I mean, mm-hmm. th- there are basically uh, 
only two characters which matter for, for the most who, who are there for the most part yeah. and then we can talk about the mother and uh, and so on people in relation to them um mm -hmm. so so there's the um i guess the protagonist would be uh, the guy uh, who mm -hmm. is a 30 something year old um anime director um um who who is trying this is basically what i get it by reading the reading the google translate um of of uh, of an archive <laughs> of the of the um official website i might post the link later on in the in the comments but um anyway he's um yeah a 30 something year old um uh, anime director who is sort of in uh, sort of uh, having a writer's block um and yeah you can feel that it's struggling with his own career and he wanted to take a break that's why he went to this place yeah um and he, uh, his character is played by shunji ivai um who um is, is sort of a indie um live action film uh, director mm. we all we already discussed one film by him here called uh, all about lily show show which is i which is kind of popular in 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 otaku circles but i we didn't like it uh, at least i and <laughs> fahrenheit didn't like it i'll have uh, to check it then yeah uh, it's uh yeah it, it, basically it's about the worst um uh, trip summer trip uh possible <laughs> 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 a, 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 yeah a, anyhow um so we have a director so I, and I believe that this is the only film film where he has done any act, acting in. Uh, oh. who, um, so we have a direct. So so basically, there are two directors on set for this one. Mm -hmm. So so you have an actual live action um, a director who is playing uh, the protagonist who, who is uh, who is an uh, who is an anime director who is trying to make a, a live action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and then we, we have um, the actual director, Anno, who is an anime director, <laughs> who is trying to make make a live action um, for real, I guess. This yeah, time. You could, they, all the movie has this sort of uh, meta-narrative about movie making and art in general. Yeah. and so uh, makes sense that they are playing on so many levels. And uh, the thing is that it, it doesn't uh, end there. So, so the actress, uh, so, so so basically this um, uh, this uh, let, let's let's just call him the director because um, f for most of the movie, uh, the girl just ca calls her Kantoku, which mm -hmm. means uh, director, uh, <laughs> rather than by calling him by by his yeah. name or something. But you don't actually see that in in the in the subtitles but i i, I could i guess i uh, that's what i could hear um so the so the actress so, so basically this uh this 30 something year old director meets uh of i guess a crazy young woman uh mm -hmm. and um i i guess uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, her as well uh, the, the, i rather the actress playing her Mm -hmm. So uh, the actress is called um, uh, Ayako Fujitani, and uh, she's uh, Steve Steven Seagal's uh, daughter. If you have heard oh. of, <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so the, the so the screenplay for the movie is an is actually an adaptation of a novel by her. Um, Interesting. Um, which was a, which which she wrote about her experience uh, being seventeen years old um, uh, during some d difficult time um, when, back when she was in Los Angeles working on her father's uh, nineteen ninety eight movie called The Patriot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. So um, so yeah, it, it gets it, it gets more meta. Um, um so as far as differences between uh, 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 um, and the novel i believe was called uh, called a, f a fleeting 
from from a dream or something, something mm. like that, which, which kind of makes sense because that, that's yeah, uh, yeah. that's what uh, the, the character. It sort of feels all the. Um, this is something um, I really liked about. Um, I would say this is a small a small scale yet heavy movie. Uh, it's verging on the oniric, like this dreamlike state, and he's asking a lot of questions, leaving them. It's up to us to answer most of them, which I find quite interesting and even uh, a little bit different from how usually the, these movies are. Usually they try to give a, a, def, a definitive answer, whereas here many things are le- uh, <coughs> sorry, are sort of left up to us. We need to fill the blanks and come to our own answers to our own conclusions um yeah i mean um one of the few uh, negative reviews uh, that i could find on uh, imdb and the reason why why there are only few uh, neg- negative reviews is because of course the only people who are going to watch this are people who are, who are interested in nano um <laughs> And uh, so, so, so one of the only uh, negative reviews, I, I think there were only two, said that um, um, they didn't like how, like, it didn't explain anything. Like, for, for example, the example which he gave was that um, um, at one point while, they, uh, while the two characters are walking by um, um, a railway, um, uh, the girl um, says that... Um, um, she likes the, um, the railway because um, uh, how did she say that uh, the two the two lines don't yes meet. they they keep going one next to the other but they never they never really meet and yet they keep going together I think that's a very poetic view and something that it's a very common image that it's uh, that it's evoked by looking at railways, like these two parallel lines going to the, in the same direction but never meeting. Um, then you can find all kind of symbolism behind it. Oh, this is like uh, our life and the lives of those around us. That's like mari- marriage in a sense, etc. I think it's sort of natural. Sometimes you bring up things that come to mind and you don't, you don't need to explain anything else. It's nice. It's like a bonding scene between the two characters. I can see maybe they could have explored it more, and yet I think by leaving it a little bit vague, um, gives it a like it's it's a natural, uh, it's it's an habit of every one of us to sometimes bring up things and leaving hanging there and <laughs> don't go any further than that. You give an opinion, you create a mental image, and then that's it. I don't think it's neither a positive or a negative thing. It's just very human. It's it's sort of real. Um. So um. So the, the um I, I uh, so two differences from the novel um, which I could find out were that um. There was no um, director in the novel, apparently. Um, I think that there was a, a postmaster or something, but, but apparently uh, the actress, has, anyway, uh, the no- novelist, I guess, <laughs> say, mm. says that um, it, it, before the changes were made, um, uh, they talked to her, so she, she didn't think that they changed anything um, in, in a wrong way. Um, so so that, that, that wasn't there. That character wasn't there, and mm-hmm. another thing which wasn't there was the thing about um, uh, tomorrow being uh, her birthday because <laughs> um, because um, her character always says that um, her birthday is going to be um, tomorrow in order to es- es- basically escape. Yes, escape from reality from the fact that things are changing and that she believes in a sort of curse she placed and, and that was placed on her family um and at the end of the movie like uh, she, she circles the 7th of um, december uh, mm-hmm. be- because that's her, her real birthday yeah i found i found, I found that, sh- that scene quite awesome 
finally she broke the spell in a sense yeah and you can see small like small traces of the um, the impact that this guy the director is having on her life first every day she checks that she's well by pretty much hanging on the edge of the abyss like she goes on top of a building and sings a sort of um skull nursery rhyme and then decides yes everything is fine but after a while she starts to check his art rather than doing these other experiments she's starting to um rely uh, rely more on him rather than on her own instincts i think it's a very interesting metaphor on how relationships work it's not about her anymore it's about how she relates to him um so um uh, about uh, the 7th of december thing uh so the moon so that that obviously that that that's at the actual actress actresses uh, real <laughs> birthday um but but it's also um um the the day that um the movie uh, pre- premi- premiered as well at, <laughs> nice. at, at a museum, uh, which apparently was an unusual thing in Japan back then to, to show a, a movie at a museum first. And uh, apparently, um, from what I could gather from the broken English Google translated, um, mm-hmm. uh, they, they had sort of a, um, sort of a, party i guess a birthday party i i, I call it a, a quote unquote a ritual uh mm. um at with a cake and everything i don't know so sounds uh, just, yeah just uh, um so uh, okay and another interesting thing um which you might have noticed as well is that um so uh basically uh i i don't know i, I guess the protagonist sort of sees the girl as uh a muse i don't know if that's the right word but uh... yes it's sort of like he starts to take an interest in her at the beginning at least because she's such a peculiar person and he wants to document how she lives and what she does you remind him a little bit there is a um, there is a book it's called la fosca uh, by Ugo Eugenio Tarchetti, um, Italian decadentist, pretty much. That it's very similar as this person that sort of falls in love with this woman that it's sickly, it's a bit weird. And he says, I want to be with her mostly because she's such a unique person. That's what I love about her. She's she's broken in a unique way. With the difference that... The, um, this book is very cynical he loves her only for that because it's more like uh sort of a unique creature that he can study and observe whereas here at the beginning he seems a little bit like this like it's curious wants to understand her and then slowly he goes through all the phases of a relationship at the beginning he wants to be with her then he sort of forces himself to be with her and towards the end, he really starts to care. He wants to be part of her world, and he wants her to be part of his. Right, like at like at some point, he he didn't even want to feel uh, uh, that much. Um, in, yes. Anyway, yeah. And um, uh, in the torrent, sorry, I mean the DVD. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> like uh, there's a file called. Um, um th- there's a video called uh, trail and girl which is um which is basically um the footage uh that uh, was was taken by the uh by the quote unquote director uh mm-hmm. director character um yeah <laughs> so all you, spliced together yeah 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 um it's called uh, trail and girl um mm-hmm. yeah um uh, there's also um some some footage um 
um, there are also two other video files. One called at at some point in in my hometown, mm -hmm. um, and another called um, another um, enroll back, um, and, and they're they're basically, uh, they're basically uh, I think one is an um delete a deleted an untranslated deleted scene, and the other is um. It's not exactly like a, a quote unquote uh, making of a documentary. It's just some behind the scenes mm -hmm. stuff. I haven't seen them. I must be honest. I'm getting lazy. <laughs> yeah. I, anyway, if you want, uh, if, if you want to see um, Anno just walking around the set <laughs> for, for, for no, whatever. It seems, <laughs> uh, very often it's interesting to to see the behind the scene because you see. Well, first of all, the craft, what goes into making a movie, and second, sometimes the director explains some of the reasons why he or she chose a certain location or a certain symbol or a certain way of filming certain things. For example, uh, something I really liked about this um, about this movie, it's there are quite a few shots where. Anno seems to linger pretty much on the... Um, uh, there are these long panning shots or these kind of very exquisite, I would say, camera angles that are shrouded pretty much in the cityscape's background noise and they show all this, like, this entangling and entangled jungle of, uh, you know, there are those bundles of cables running on those walkways or the roofs and it's like pretty much a different world above the um, above the daily life of other men and women uh, in a sense it turns the um, the city itself into sort of a background character this kind of indifferent kind of sleepy creature which they walk into and through and you can sort of feel like all these cables and the railways are sort of like uh, the nervous system or the skeleton of it's, this creature it's like evangelion I find it, no but it, this is something that I, I cannot give uh, Anno enough credit in this regard it's really good he, he really has a talent of blending the organic and um and uh, inorganic. I, if I recall right, I don't want to say something stupid. If I'm wrong, forgive me. But I do believe um, it was the um, one of the directors together with our, uh, Ayao Miyazaki when he came to um, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And you can sort of see some of those uh, prototype ideas that later on will be fully shown in Evangelion with a lot of this mechanical mix with biological mix with metaphysical that in this movie are seen to a different degree but are present. Um, speaking of uh, Naomisika, uh, there's a short, um, sh uh, basically a short film of which uh, Anno made. Um, what was it called? Um, Giant God Warrior, uh, uh, it's called Giant God Warrior, appears in Tokyo, and it's mm. um, it's um, a short movie. Um, I can't, I don't know how many minutes, probably around fourteen minutes or something like that. Of uh, of um, it's live action, and it's mm -hmm. the monster from Nadia. Um, um, from Nausicaa, yes, yes, Nausicaa, because that's sorry. the name. I, will, I was yeah. about to say that's the name of the last of this. Uh, biological slash mechanical creatures that were created by men to fight to fight the the war the the next war to end all wars that this time ended all wars because it destroyed all of the, all of the all of, of all of creation pretty much so oh, that's interesting so it's yeah. a movie with the same creature rampaging of Tokyo. through Tokyo yeah um it's just um it's just a short movie but um. I guess um, uh, some people say that he used some of those effects uh, again when making uh, Shin Godzilla um, in two thousand mm. two thousand eleven. Um, so about I mean um, e even in Eva, um, 
uh, the uh, the Eva units are b- biomechanical. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a mixture so, of both. And, and and the city um, city of course has a presence uh, too. Uh, yeah. As well. Um. So it's really good. I really like those um, long shots where it's like it's raining and you see the different parts of the city with the narration explaining why she has this kind of love love hatred relationship with with the rain it was very touching if there is something that i uh, this movie doesn't scheme of is uh the human side of emotions it goes very in depth about why we feel certain things why uh sometimes we have to sort of um, hang on to all sort of fiction, even movies are a form of fiction to go on. Yeah. Because um... pretty much the ritual and this counting the um, uh, the days till the birthday that will never come, it's a sort of <laughs> sort of exorcism. It's this person try to avoid facing reality by escaping in this world of her own making with all these rituals, these symbols, these gestures she has to perform to keep this sort of incantation going on. Um, if you if you want to see uh, more of Anno just walking around his um, hometown, <laughs> uh, there's um, there's a documentary called. Uh, um, it's it's called et, extra curricular lessons with Hideaki Anno, um, but it's also hmm. sometimes called um, um, Anno talks to kids, and <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I know, um, and um, it, it, it's also where like uh, that quote where like um, um, th- 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 that that quote where Anno says that uh, the reason why I added that. Uh, those things in uh, Evangelion. It's just because they looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, anyway. As per usual, a quote that is easily misconstructed, misunderstood, and, and misused. I mean, something can can look cool and have a meaning as well. I guess. No, exactly. I think it was kind of joking. Yeah, it's I the think... same thing when when they caught Miyazaki saying anime was a mistake. It's easy to take it out of context. Um, yeah, so so in this documentary, like, um, so it was part of a series where like uh, creators would go back to their hometown mm-hmm. um, and go to a school uh, to teach kids um, about what they're doing, and like, um, mm, nice. Um, so, so it's basically him teaching about a, a bunch of kids um, uh, how to do animation and getting them to, <laughs> to, uh, to make a short anime. Uh, it, it was nice. Um, all right, so uh, I guess we could explain. Um, yeah. Um, what else do I have to say about the movie? Um, yeah, the, the narration. Uh, so there are some na- narration uh, that sometimes, mm-hmm. um, like the, well, a, yeah. sometimes I'd say rather, rather throughout the whole movie, there is very often the very often the director tries to tries to explain what's going on, at least um, describing. It's mostly about the emotional side of things, rather the the events enveloping and happening around them. It's trying. It's, it's sort of like this trying to discern what's really going on with this person and why she does things. So I find it kind of fascinating that they just expose the image of the city or the different locations we already seen in other sh- shots and they sort of explain what what he was able to find out and what he's trying to piece together by what he was able to understand moment by moment yeah and, and apparently um i don't know i i didn't i didn't recognize this this when watching it but apparently some of the narration is not actually like the, the narration is not actually done by the actor, but it's it's done um, by another uh, by the actors, but but by some other voice actors um, um, for both because because there's a 
there's a male narrator and a female narrator. Mm-hmm. Um, the female narrator, I will, I kind of recognize it was a different voice. It was too different from the actress. Yeah, yeah. For the male narrator, no, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the same actor. And um, the female narrator um, is, uh, by the way, uh, Megumi Hayashibara, who is the voice actress, both for the female version of Ranma and as well for <laughs> um, for Reya Yanami. I didn't. I, I was surprised to find out that uh, it was the same voice actress. That's but yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know who who the male uh, voice actor was. Um, Okay, um, let's see if I can find... So about, I guess we could... Exp- oh, oh, and another thing, the movie was produced by uh, Studio Ghibli. Um, oh. oh, really? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> uh, it, it's the only live action uh, that, that, that they have done. Um, so Must have been because at the time they were still in good terms with Anno. Yeah, I don't know if they're in bad terms <laughs> now or whatever, but um... well, some of the criticism that Anno lobbed that Miyazaki, I think the rest are they left a sour taste. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. What did he say? <laughs> no, you you know what he said about Porco Rosso, for example. Or I think they didn't. Uh, later on, they had some some kind of strong disagreements on some political views and i think i see from, yeah. from what i recall again don't take it as um <laughs> i could be absolutely wrong but that's what i gathered yeah reading I, I, various I, things I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised because um hayao miyazaki is a hardcore pacifist and uh shin, mm. God, shin godzilla is basically saying uh Jap- <laughs> japan should rearm uh, quickly, <laughs> um, and not be bullied by the United States. Um, yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, it was uh, produced by. So so um at the start it says uh, studio um uh, Kajino, but that's just um that was just an offshoot of Studio Ghibli. Um, I see. Uh, and it was run by the former president of Studio Ghibli. Hmm. Um. So, um, so I, I think the, I could read the, the little bit about from, um, because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. unusually, b- b- usually like on Wikipedia, like uh, when they try to explain the story, it just goes into too much detail. Um, uh, but, but <laughs> Depends, here it's, honestly. But here it's uh, pretty short. So, which to be fair, that there's not much. So, so the film follows a young director returning to to his um, home city of Ube in Yama, Yam, uh, Yamaguchi prefecture, you know, just like Kano, <laughs> and, um, and an, etre- a, an eccentric young woman, um, a young woman he meets, whose quirks include saying tomorrow is my birthday every day and wearing very unusual clothing. Um, so, um, a- a- as I said before we started recording, um, I was able to find one podcast, um, I can't remember what it was called, I think it was called something like Thinking Too Hard About Anime or something. <laughs> um, and in their, um, in their episode um, about um, uh, Cutie Honey at the start, they, sto- they, to- they also talk about sh- Shikijetsu. And um, one of the things that they complained about um, was that, uh, obviously, so it, it they were basically two leftists. Obviously, they, they didn't like. Uh, uh, they, they kept on talking about uh, cutie honey, like, uh, like this was some hardcore. Uh, uh, I don't know, woman hating thing or whatever. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like, like, like in, in, in hushed tones, like, um, you know it. Um, it's, it's the 70s, I won't sugarcoat it. Yeah. <laughs> because the manga, um, Gona Guy's manga is from the 70s, um, which got adapted into Kyutiani. But, but uh, about uh, Shikijitsu, what they mentioned was that they, um, that they, 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 kind, they kind of labeled um, the, the young woman here, the, the female character, um, as a 
manic pixie Cute yeah, girl. the manic pixie girl is a usual trope. Of... Honestly, the manic pixie girl is closer to a goth that wants to kill, but has a strange crush on the. Uh, or most often is the the main protagonist has a crush on this crazy girl that's that's kind of like into dark stuff, and she has a turn. Uh, uh, a past riddled with turmoil and bad events and every once in a while she goes crazy. I don't, I don't know if I would describe her as a manic pixie girl. For sure she has trauma. For sure she has a little bit of a goth side, but I wouldn't say she's that kind of archetype. I really like her because she's, she is very strange. She, uh, she keeps I see her more like um, um, something of a of a geisha. She keeps wearing these strange and colorful clothes. A couple of times she goes to a sort of gothic Lolita um, phase, you know, kind of like when she has the cat in a couple of days. But most of the time, her colors are very like very bright. She has uh, a mixture of old and new. With the, with the umbrella and everything. I wouldn't say that the Manic Pixie Girl fits her that much. For sure, can be seen as a, as a facet, as an element, but she's quite unique. Yeah. Um. So an- another, f- I guess, a uh, fun fact about the actress uh, would be that um, uh, she starred in the Gamera movies. Uh, so the Gamera movies yeah. are like, uh, like Godzilla, I guess. Uh, essentially. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's just a, a different big monster. But yeah, yeah runs parallel to again railroad tracks because. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, I, I believe that Anno also worked um, in some minor capacity of, on uh, some of those movies, camera. Hmm. Um, according to, to the actress, anyway, um, it, it, it was Anno who came across um, the novel, um, and then they, they met somewhere under cherry petals. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So many connections, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's that's why the the, the live action got made. Um, w- would you say that uh, Cutie uh, from Cutie Honey is a manic pixie dream girl? No, she's too naive. She's too pure. She's not manic enough. That's the thing. One of the and she always dress in bright colors. Yeah, I I, I guess. Um... I, I, from what I understood uh, of this trope, it's something like uh, when people use it ne- negatively, is that oh, uh, they, they just created this character so that the self-insert uh, male protagonist, um, th- like he doesn't have to solve any of his problems, but this girl will come and um, this this magical, uh, cheerful girl will come and uh, solve her problem. So, so something, mm. something like that. Um, I don't know. the The character seems to, the character of the director, I mean, seems to go through an arc, but it doesn't change much because it doesn't need to change, honestly, that much. The important thing for uh, for him is to realize that he needs to take care of this person, and I don't think that's a bad thing in itself. Of course, these kind of people would say, would say that, oh, but he's just turning her into a sort of trophy and something like this. But he seems to re- to be caring towards the end. He even one, he even goes so far to try and and fix a relationship with her mother. And of course, it's not easy. But because of that. She's able to um, sort of process how things need to move at one point. You cannot linger and stay still 
all the time. Sometimes you need to be able to move on and realize, well, something bad happened. Uh, I have this problem with this person, et cetera, et cetera. And she's able to uh, accept all of this and she keeps on growing. That's why she's able, in the end, she pieces back together the calendar she destroyed and marks her birthday. Like she's a finally able to accept reality again. Come to think of it, uh, in this movie they, they do the you know the, the countdown thing, like in Love Exposure. Right? Yes. <laughs> Even um, if here it's a bit different, I think, because it's the uh, the um, the final event, in a sense, is the. Um, is her breaking through, finally facing her mother and confronting a, confronting this issue on all levels, and not just try to turn it into a uh, into a sort of uh, I would say it's sort of a form of exorcism for her. She wants to exorcise her fears by repeating these gestures. And once this per once the director is able to break through and force her, because in a sense it's forced, but it's, it's for her good, forces her to face her mother and finally get over it. That's when the ritual ends. This movie and real life starts again. Uh, th this movie is basically the uh, autistic uh, GF uh, meme. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, whatever it's called. Um, One of those, uh, yeah, yeah, remember, idea, the idea, <laughs> autistic. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, um, you, you know, like people these these days uh, sit, like say that like uh, don't try to fit uh, if she's uh, if she's crazy then I'll leave <laughs> that's what, mm -hmm. what you usually say people say which most of the times it's true <laughs> yes um um yeah so uh, I, I guess about um, um about, about her like being fixed or whatever by him or him using uh, her as a trophy or whatever. Uh, I mean, um, I guess, um, you know, like when she's suddenly not in a good mood, like, uh, like, like, for example, if you remember that scene where like she comes across, uh, they're, they're walking somewhere, uh, the mm -hmm. as, as usual, um, and she comes across a, a dirty, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she asks him a couple of questions. It's like a little bit like gives half answers, and she's a little bit concerned about his replies. Um. Yeah. What? What, what was it? Was it something like? Uh, oh, like um. She was basically accusing him of being with her because. Uh, he had expected sets at the end of it or something. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, more yeah. or less, that's why she's like jokingly trying to tease the answer out of him. She wants to see what's his real end goal. Yeah, but but, but, uh, but like throughout the end, the, like the, there's no um, like a moment where like the, there's this outpouring of emotions by him at. Or, or, or was there? No, it seems to be a person who uh, tries to handle his emotions in a um, mature, mature and responsible way. He doesn't want to have outbursts. So, so apparently, when um, Anna was asked why did he choose uh, to have like a director play. Um, the protagonist. Uh, he answered something like, uh, "Because, um, because he, because obviously the the, the main role is a director, so <laughs> a director would know best how to act like." One. It is true that usually, if the person has a background, he can immerse himself or herself better in the role. 
um but, but also he said that it was because like um he he looked like like a cool guy <laughs> that that i give give him credit for the guy does look like a director the kind of uh grungy look he has with that coat and all dressed in black the long hair he has the right um i don't know he portrays himself in a way that makes you believe both in, in the movie i say makes you believe believe in the movie and in real life makes you understand that yes this guy is a director um, so I'll I'll continue reading the the story. So, uh, but as the, as the days go by, it appears that the woman has little touch with reality, and is constantly escaping into a fantasy fantasy world. While the director the director himself is a former anime director who is seeking to do a quote unquote real film and embrace mm-hmm. reality. Um. Yeah, so I, I guess he, he does talk a little bit about it, um, that uh, so, so that, that he's trying to. Um, I I don't like I I'm not sure whether this is Anno speaking about why he, he decided to move to live action. I mean I I don't think that uh, something like uh, Shin Godzilla is anywhere near nearer to reality than anime. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but but that that's basically I, I believe that. Um, what the narrator, what the protagonist basically says as much, that even um, even with a real camera and all uh, all that, um, they're not still um, it's not still catching reality or something, <laughs> something yeah. vague like that. Um, Which is again, it's a reflection. It, it's not like shown as the correct answer. It seems more like the view of this person, and it's an intriguing take. For example, Tarkovsky would be kind of the opposite idea that you can truly show reality. And that's why many of his movies are so slow, why the pace is so slow, because he wants to show you the actors performing those actions and immerse you in that reality, no matter how fictional everything else may be, the reality captured by the camera in that moment, it's real. In this case, it's it's playing a little bit with this idea, which is kind of nice. Mm. I mean, uh, I wondered like to what extent it's because of the equipment and effects they use. Because um, so as the background images for this um, discussion, um, I, I have um, used a bunch of pictures which are which are actually not from the movie. But uh, from, sorry, uh, uh, from them um, scouting for a location for the movie, mm-hmm. um, in in, in uh, and it's pictures of the actual locations uh, before they would start to shoot the movie, and <laughs> basically the, the the thing um, is that like you can clearly see that uh, you can clearly see the see the difference between sub like uh, like a like a still from from the movie um and a still which just looks like uh, something that we could have made which looks just mm. ordinary um and i wonder how much of it is just because of uh, equipment and effects um and stuff like no, of that of course something that i noticed throughout the movie it's how very often they are using um wide angles so everything is a little bit stretched and You can see at the edges that there is a little bit of an aberration. The images are curving. So it's, yeah. So it's It's not like how, uh, yeah, it's like uh, there is a, the correct term is like, um, I don't remember. In Italian, Italian it's like fisheye lens. That is like widens everything and creates this sort of uh, curvature on the images. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think that's what they call it in English as well. Um, Let me see. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the the two eventually fall in love. Spoilers. In in the end, <laughs> uh, in the end, the director confronts the woman uh, with her mother, mm-hmm. allowing the woman to make the first steps into the real world. 
um, the film ends with the girl circling uh, December 7th as her real birthday. And the words um, beyond the, thir- th- the, 30th, uh, the 33rd day uh, unknown. Mm. Uh, okay. Um, so there's one thing which I did not get. Um, so at one point in the movie, um, um, the, the woman is alone. Um, uh, and she she sees um, a, a, a man uh, come out of a, of a taxi or a car. Um, yes, and she sort of has... A, um, she relives a traumatic event in her life. I think uh, it has to do with how uh, the father ran away from the family. And so seeing a man in a car looking at her sort of brings back the memory of, of the father who had abandoned her and her sister and left them with this, uh, with the mother that was someone who didn't, seems to be someone that didn't care about them at all until she had need for them. And that's why she she runs away. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't get to see, uh, we don't get to see the sister. I mean, I guess we get, we get, we get to see the, we get to see the, the, her basically acting out um, mm-hmm. <laughs> as the sister. But we, we don't get to see the sister. We only get to see the mother towards the end um and before that um the only thing that we hear f- uh, from her are some recorded messages yeah from, you um, can feel that she's sort of un- unhinged and mad at her own daughter because she ran away and went with that guy that appears for like 10 minutes the weird guy with the curly hair and later on he appears with a bandage over his eye by the way, the, the 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 weird guy with the curly hair wasn't he actually uh, originally the the boyfriend of the sister? Mm-hmm. Um. So, so I, so so so, so, so from what I get, follow, um, the dad ran away with another woman or something, and then died. Yes. Supposedly died. We don't know if he if he actually died. In a fire. Yeah. Um, at, at first, we are told that the mother is dead as well, but that turns out to be a lie. Um, the mother mm-hmm. and sister are also dead, but th- yeah, I, I believe that th- they, th- they don't really say that the sister is dead either. She just ran away as well. Yes. But you, this is the interesting. This is the the interesting thing is this that um, the the woman is a very unreliable narrator, so you cannot really know what the heck is going on to a degree. Yeah, because certain I... things may be twisted in her own mind because she's trying to cope with some trauma. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I I guess her trauma was that she felt lonely, even when she mm-hmm. was with a, a mother or something. Um, yeah, I mean the, the the one of the only questions that the protagonist asks, like during the scene. Um, the director asked during the scenes where, like, uh, the mother and finally meets, uh, decides mm-hmm. to meet with uh, with her. Um, is uh, like, is the sister ac- actually dead? Um, and the answer w- w- was no. Um, mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, th- th- like th- there as well. Um, he-, he doesn't do much. He just sits there and at the end asks, well, um, so I- I- are we awake now? Is this? Uh, is this yeah. the end of the dream, or yeah, is this still part of the dream? Yeah, which um, which kind of reminded me of um, the monologue at the end of the end of Evangelion. Um, <laughs> well, I guess it's something that I know as an interest in, like this sort of like illusions we create, and this movie seems to be on similar terms when it comes to trying to explore trauma and what we may what we may make with it some people turn into a dream some people try to run away from it some people merge it with their own imagination and they turn into something else 
Yeah, I, 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 if, like, um, because uh, at the end of the end of Evangelion, there's this, there's this live action section, uh, with a voiceover, um, and like, uh, which, which says stuff like, uh, where does the, uh, where does the, the dream begin and reality, uh, mm. end, or, or, or something like that. Uh, reality begins where your dream ends, <laughs> or so something, uh, some other vague stuff like that. Um. In, in that case, it, I think it was clearly about escapism into fiction. In this case, mm-hmm. I, I guess it was this, sort of the same in this case as well, maybe. Yes, the, in a sense, it's like even poking fun at the movie itself, like it's a form of escapism too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What you saw, it's fiction. Therefore, in a sense, it doesn't really... Doesn't really matter. It's it's kind of hypocritical if you think about it. Yeah, but if you if you see the other if you see the other points when he talks about fiction and what movies are, and now we often watch them just to uh, escape reality. Sort of makes sense. I don't want to sound cliche, but like George Lucas said, it kind of kind of rhyme. <laughs> um. Okay. Um so uh what um rating would you give this film? I would say it's um an eight minus. It's straightforward enough, leaves enough questions hanging about and the characters in their simplicity are captivating and fascinating. And I really liked the um, the camera work and some of the shots of the city. It really made it feel like something in between dream and reality. And that's something I, I, I'm undeniably attracted to. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah, but... that... Yeah, it's my sister's bird. Let me throw something at you quickly. It, it's all right. It's like you're making a film or something. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah. About uh, about that. Um. I guess I could quote uh, that little quote, which I posted on on the on the server by Anno. So, the, an interviewer asked him um, why. Um, uh, he draws uh, st- streets and cities that way, um, and what sort of places he draws in- inspiration from. And he he answered that um, he answered this. So I really like anything man-made, uh, buildings, power lines, highways, etc. I love anything made of concrete, iron, and by human hands. Um, which is kind of st- strange. I I think I read so- somewhere else that um. Uh, I think it was Google translated, so I'm not exactly sure, but it kind of mm-hmm. seemed like um, natural things did not uh, impress him as much um, as things <laughs> as things made by people. Um, so, um, which I kind of I, I kind of share share with him a little bit. Um, that that's what I was kind of um, trying to say um, earlier when when I talked about the difference between. Uh, the shots, um, the stills taken for uh, scouting for a location, and the the screenshots from the movie. Um, mm-hmm. Like obviously, one is more artificial than the other, and the more artificial one uh, is better <laughs> in that, mm-hmm. even though it, it even though it reflects reality less. Um, so. Um, he goes on to say, so I have this kind of desire to draw uh, them as detailed as possible. Um, I'm careful about not going uh, too fine to the fantastic and making sure that the essentials are there. Like, um, you know, one of the reasons why I can't, I find it hard to get into cartoons um, as opposed to anime is that uh, in anime the characters normally look fantastical and, and all that, but but the backgrounds, on the other hand... Yeah, very often they are stunningly detailed. And, uh, like, they, they kind of seem real, so I, I, can, I can kind of um, 
you know, suspend the disbelief about uh, mm-hmm. um, these characters with, with uh, weird uh, hair colors. Um, yeah, especially in old anime when when they show destruction or items, um, they put a lot of effort on the details and make it as realistic as possible when they get damaged or deformed or when there is an explosion. I remember not too long ago um, we were talking about that anime. What's the name? Trigon, something like this. Trigon. And I, yeah, no, no, it's another one. But well, Trigon too. There are some scenes where there is a lot of destruction. You can see buildings actually being destroyed by bullets and stuff like this. Immerse immerses you a lot more compared to static and very simple backgrounds where only characters interact with one another and that's it which is one of the f- problems with modern European animation, I think. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's kind of weird bec- because on the other hand, when it comes to CGI in live action in particular, I, usually, it, no, no matter how realistic uh, they make it, like I, I, like I don't feel as impressed mm-hmm. as... Um, we, because obviously, it's hard uh, to, um, to, to, do, to do those effects, but... Usually, I, I'm more impressed with uh, more if um, if I if I kind of feel uh, like uh, like uh, the, the hand of the uh, um, animator yes. drawing um, drawing. The... There is a different weight to it. And um, uh, e- even if um, even and 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 this and, and this is even if the CGI. Uh, sometimes or very often i would say in modern movies obviously looks more realistic than whatever they, whatever happens in anime fights mm-hmm. where, uh, <laughs> things... well, maybe that's the issue maybe it's because it it's too realistic whereas in anime there is um stylization there is, yeah there is sort of a compromise that's done with the animation itself and yet um, it it feels so much more poignant so much more impactful um i, I mean um, i think we have already talked about uh, you know that meme where like the, the same kind of place with, with trees and whatnot or buildings and whatnot mm-hmm. if it's in if it's in japan like you have like the, the excited uh um you know w- 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 with soy, the jack, hand, yeah. soy jack with the hands next to his face and whatnot uh, um i uh, but when, when it, if it's if it's revealed that it, it's in Europe or America or something, oh, then then it's suddenly not exciting anymore. Um, Depends. For example, French animation, it's still above most of American European animation. If you ever saw some movies or um, TV shorts and stuff like this, the French still have a unique style which elevates it to most of uh, modern Western productions. Hmm. So that's, for example, something that it's kind of different from both Japanese and Western mainstream animation. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that they have also got their own comic book industry. Um, yes, as well. yes, the French one is quite big. French slash Belgian. They are very similar in style. Um, yeah, uh, and, and and there's some some weird uh, French Japanese uh, stuff like uh, called Lyoko, if you've seen that. Yeah, as well. I didn't like the style. The story was quite interesting, but the style I really didn't like it. It's one of the few cases where I was like, sort of like disappointed by French animation. I see. Um, yeah, I. I yeah, I per- didn't particularly mind um, because it. Uh, b- back then, uh, when I was in Sri Lanka, there was no uh, almost no anime uh, going on, and this was the closest mm-hmm. thing. Oh, so exciting! Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but, but, but uh, what I mean is that like um, it, it doesn't have to be like a uh, like a like an action, even an action scene, um, um, even something like uh, I don't know, like uh, like. Um, Grass, <laughs> you know they say mm-hmm. touch grass. Um, they put a lot of efforts, yes, in making it look detailed enough without losing the the cartoon charm. As yeah, and and uh, but if I were to see the same thing in reality, 
uh, I wouldn't be impressed by it even if <laughs> <laughs> because part of it is um, like um, I, I remember uh, not somebody but a, a academic agent saying that like um, w when it comes to um, stuff like uh, no, it was not an academic agent it was some, somebody else on his stream so an academic agent said that he thought that all, all guitar, guitar solos were basically wanking on stage um <laughs> Uh, but then somebody else on 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 the show um, said that um, no. Uh, uh, the, the reason why you think that is because you don't play guitar and whatnot, and you need to be able to. Um, you you need to be able to play. Uh, if you can if you can play a little bit, then you, then you can realize when someone is doing something very hard, very hard, difficult. <laughs> Essential. There is a nugget of truth in that, even if I don't think you need to know to understand when something is really good. What I mean is that um, if you have tried to draw something um, realistically yourself, um, you, mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult. So when no, 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 because no, no. of that... I did it. I did it. I uh, I learned some not many but some of the techniques to for, exa uh, for example um, some of the textures so to say wood or leather um, glass paper it's very difficult to give them a real life um, sort of shine or the correct tra um, transparency or the or the feel of the fabric or of the matrix, matrix itself, in a sense, that I, gives the eff that gives to your eyes the effect of that surface of that particular texture. I, I imagine that this is also the case when it comes to stuff like, um, um, you know, uh, the, the tea ceremony uh, and uh, those Japanese rock gardens, mm -hmm. uh, flower flower arrangement and whatnot. <laughs> where, like, Ikebana, it, yes. yeah. Well, like if you look at it, it's like okay, it's just a bunch of stones. Uh, I don't feel anything. Um, <laughs> but maybe like if, if you if you knew how to do it badly, uh, then you would. Um, if you knew a little bit to do it badly, a little bit about it, then only mm -hmm. then uh, you would. Anyway, in a sense, you you gain a sort of respect for those who know how to really do these kind of things. Yeah, it's it's like it's like you gain. Um, um, a sense which you didn't have before, like uh, mm -hmm. you know, like a taste or yes, you don't take feel. it for granted anymore. So, um, and I, I and I guess m maybe when it comes to natural things, um, because nobody, um, <laughs> nobody except God, I guess, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, put an effort to make it. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit hard to uh, appreciate that for some. Uh, yeah, but it speaks more about our indifference than <laughs> <laughs> behind the actual beauty of something like a simple tree or a flower. Um, so, uh, I like uh, so so I don't like drawing things. So this is Anno again. Uh, I don't like uh, drawing things carelessly. Uh, if if this sort of thing is here, then there must be two railway lines running through the area, which means we need a railway crossing underneath. Um, I always try to be careful about those sort of things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it can be kind of entertaining when you play with that sort of thing, um, and you you have uh, stuff which which is not expected. But sometimes it it, mm -hmm. like it it becomes a little bit too much. So if you have seen the movie Paprika, um, they are like uh, it, it, like everything is within a within a dream. Um, mm -hmm. So you you have like, like um, you you probably have seen the, the scene which gets shared uh, a lot uh, about this uh, this demented procession uh, in a dream. So there's like uh, high school girls who whose heads are like uh, basically uh, flip phones because they're always on their phones and it's supposed to be mm -hmm. um, metaphorical and whatnot. Um, I. I did. I, I wasn't I impressed. By, it, yeah. yeah, I wasn't impressed by that 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 sort of thing. Um, so uh, the interview ask, uh, asks, asks, uh, what are your intentions uh, be behind uh, featuring uh, Rails in your work? What do they mean for you? Uh, 
would have been funny if if you had just said uh, I just think I just I just like them. <laughs> so, I like rails. And that's yeah. It. That's it. <laughs> um. So he says, um, I, I use rails when I want to in an indirect way. Uh, express an idea like being taken somewhere. For example, the railroad tracks in uh, um, in Shikijitsu. The mm -hmm. two ra rails uh, never cross one another. Um, that image of running next to one another always at the same fixed distance, never crossing into each other. That's what I'm expressing. Also, I lived uh, next to a railroad when I was younger, so I really liked them. Every time, um, every time I, I used them, um, the int intention changes. Um, my own feeling about um, railways is that I don't want them anywhere near where I live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's something we can agree yeah. on. No thanks, no railways <laughs> close by, please. Yeah, um, I don't know, like, they are noisy, they, are mm. they can kind of be dirty. Um, as well. Yeah, uh, they are, they attract usually weird crowds. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I guess I I do like some um uh, uh, rail stations though. Uh, for, like even back in mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, there are some very uh, beautiful um rail stations um built by the British. Um, oh yeah, especially old-fashioned ones can be quite a sight. Yeah, some and... of them almost look like greenhouses. With all the, um, I think it was the Victorian style where there was a lot of uh, wrought iron mixed with glass. That was usually one of the things that they really liked to do, and then neoclassical style. Railroad station. Those are very nice. Yeah. Uh, I I think I think um yeah I don't think that that they have uh, like such things in Japan. I think uh, most of the uh, rail stations um, are basically modern. Uh, there. Yeah. Uh, so... Honestly, I've never been there, so I cannot. <laughs> you cannot say. I'm cannot. sure there are. I'm sure there are some remote stations which are like frozen in time, maybe uh, frozen in the 60s or 70s. At yeah. least when it, when it comes to the core architectural structure. Yeah, but, but like uh, the feeling that I get it like, that even back then, like it was built um, in a hurry as uh, fast as possible, essentially. Um, yeah, for sure. After the war, they wanted to expand in all those areas, and they tried to do it the fastest, most efficient way. So for sure, they standardize certain things. Yeah. Come to think of it, the characters um, in this movie do uh, go on uh, on an old uh, train carriage or something, mm -hmm. kind of old from the nineteen thirties. They said. Uh, Something. Yeah, and like it's, and they say it's pretty much there is only two of them still running on one line, and that's it. Um, yeah. What else is there to say? Um, I would give this film. You know, I I wanted to give it a um, I wanted to give it a set, but maybe that's too harsh. Um, let's <laughs> uh, let's go with a with a seven. I think. Um, I probably enjoyed. Um, Cutie honey model. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, well, the thing is, cutie honey is something I enjoy too, by more of a <laughs> confused way. Especially because it loses some of the steam after the first part. Whereas this movie, it's slower. It's paced in a different way. It's told in a chronological in a chronological way, but with a sort of, uh, I would say, different gravitas. Hmm. I, In uh, a sense, it's about the destiny of these persons. So um, the, the people on that uh, podcast I mentioned earlier <laughs> also came to like a similar conclusion. Obviously, they, they didn't like Cutie Honey because it says it's the, 
uh, racist, uh, fascist, and misogynist they can want. But uh, fetishistic movie, blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. blah. Objectivation, but, blah, yeah, blah blah blah. But, but um, I I think <laughs> if you if you if for a moment uh, you you take you take out the feminist bullshit, uh, what's left is <laughs> is basically them saying. Oh, we are adults now. Like uh, we can't, uh, we can't be. This movie is serious. Therefore, um, yeah, um, and and that movie is not serious. Um, which I I, I kind of don't like. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I don't agree. A movie doesn't need to be like all serious, etc. I think also that towards the end there were some, like I said when we were reviewing that movie, towards the end there were some emotional punches thrown that were kind of effective yeah I, so... I, I think on the, on the server we were also talking about like when it comes to anime um, they don't really care about uh, tonal whiplash so they will have yeah a... yeah we were talking um, in one of the I don't remember a few I think yesterday we were talking a little bit about that because they got a different sensib- uh, sensitivity and sensibility when it comes to these themes and how they discuss them. And I think it's fair enough to have different views on how to handle certain emotions in certain situations. Mm. Um, so uh, in some of the posters uh, for this film, for... Um... For Shiki Jitsu, like there was, uh, like, uh, like there was a uh, like something like a, it's not exactly a poem, but uh, it, it sort of came off as a little bit emo to me. So, mm-hmm. uh, so it goes like this: uh, He told me I am useless. She told me, my face makes her mad, but I'm still here doing nothing, and I feel empty, uh, waiting for someone. Uh, to hold me, I know nobody's coming. Um, sh- um, I think so. he told me to die. She told me to see nothing. Um, and apparently hmm. th- this was on on the posters and stuff. Um, and Weird. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's where a bit a picture of um of the actress uh, there. Um, um. It's superimposed on on that, I guess. Or that, hmm. yeah. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, and because um, the movie does doesn't feel like um, I wouldn't say it has an oppressive tone, whereas this poem seems rather depressed. Yeah, I, I guess it's supposed to be the um, the act the character. Uh, we don't have a name for her, so um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, what did you think of um, the apartment um, where she lives in? If you thought anything about it, it was kind kind of strange. Uh, I don't know if there is like if they wanted to go for a deep symbolism of uh, like you know different floors maybe are like the different stages of her grief or. Maybe some of them are like the ego, the super ego, the id. I'm not going to try and overanalyze them. I found it kind of interesting that where she, let's say, the floor that she inhabits is where uh, everything is organized in a certain way. You got the different areas with different things that she performs. And then most of the upper floors are just abandoned office spaces. Yeah, I mean, for for example, uh, down in the in the basement, which is flooded, mm-hmm. um, she she sometimes, uh, I to be honest, like, I kind of felt like uh, this was just done just done um, just to look cool, K- kind of like um, in the mono uh, the visuals in the Monogatari series, where like it's all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how. Um, so well, sometimes, sometimes having cool places, cool sets, doesn't need to have any deeper explanation. It says, "Looks cool." It's kind of metaphorical. You can read a little bit of what you want in it, and that's it. 
like uh, f- for example uh, down in the basement she has some, some like a sh- like a shrine for the guitar mm-hmm. um I c- the only thing which I could make out, out about it was something like uh, maybe it was her sister's guitar or something. Yeah. yeah but it's not, it's not really clear. Um, again, there's stuff like the red umbrellas which she uses. Mm-hmm. Again, doesn't really mean anything. Um, the fact that there there's four t- telephones uh, on mm-hmm. her, on her t- table. I uh, think it's because it was a family of four. So maybe that's why there are four telephones. Each one of them represents them. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, by, by the way, um, when um, uh, the, the 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 walls come off um of the of uh, of the room, they are like, uh, <laughs> yeah. and there's a bunch of pictures uh, of of the model. Yeah. Uh, I found it a bit funny that like she doesn't ask anything about it. <laughs> Why are there a bunch of pictures of me there? She doesn't even yeah. look at look at it when she gets there. Um, maybe we don't see it. Maybe she asks, but it's not the focal point of the scene. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What else was there weird? Um. Uh, <sighs> I kind of liked how the um, the the lady likes to hide herself in the bathtub in a fetal position, like trying to return to the womb and escape reality. Yeah, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, she looks kind of cute too, so that that helps. Uh, <laughs> So uh, th- th- there was also, I guess, the drawings of uh, her mother. Um, mm-hmm. They are like, uh, so th- th- yeah, she looks like, like kind yeah, of like sort a of she, yeah, like a strange monster that she wishes to kill. Yeah, the the intent there is pretty clear, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and th- th- there's also when she's talking about uh, killing her. Um, there's also the scene where like. Um, um, which also kind of look kind of a bit tacky, where where, where there's like there's like a mannequin of um, her, uh, her mother, yeah. and, uh, and she pushes it and it breaks. Yeah, um... I think it was sort of it was a bit yeah it was a bit on the cheesy like kind of tacky side, but it worked as a manifestation of what her wish would be but she knows that you it wouldn't be killing the real person so that's why it breaks like a mannequin yeah um the the telephones are also red i believe if i mm-hmm. can remember yeah oh uh, and then and there's the racetrack which uh, constantly gets trashed and then and then the car <laughs> the little cars get set on fire Mm-hmm. Uh, because with... there, I think it was her trying to record in a sort of way, try to keep a connection with her sister that uh, liked those cars, uh, blue I cars. Ha- oh, did she? I can't remember that. Um... I think they say they mentioned it a couple of times. That it was a gift because her sister really liked them and gave it to her. I think I I read somewhere that they gave away the guitar and the cars as a, as a gift or something hmm. to to the to the people who came for the for the premiere or whatever. But <laughs> didn't they burn them? So I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they burnt a replica. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, when you, uh, people are seen, when people share um, stuff, it's usually, uh, I mean, by stuff, I mean clips and screenshots. It's usually from um, inside the apartment, though I, though I personally felt that most of the inter- interesting scenes happened outside in the town uh, for the most Yeah, the ones inside the apartment were um, were interesting, but they didn't explain much. Whereas when they are talking and sort of exploring the city and the outskirts of the city, you get a deeper sense of what the characters are thinking or 
Yeah. Want to see who they really are? Um, I, I guess w- one of the things which uh, which I did wonder, which for a moment broke my immersion, was like, how how can this woman afford this uh, this building? But but then it it came to me that she's probably just uh, illegally mm-hmm. uh, yeah. staying there. <laughs> You're just staying there. <laughs> it seems like it's an abandoned building. Probably yeah. the company that was there moved out, and you can see there is like. The basement is flooded. There is water dripping inside the building. So probably it's a condemned building that she's like living in, like squatting. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but the thing about the water, like I, I remember that like she can turn it on and off, right? Yeah, that's yeah. part, no, it's part of it. You can see when it rains, there is water coming from the stairs too. I see, I see. And even in the, they live on the third floor, if I remember right. And you can see that sometimes there are like, when it's raining, there are buckets to collect any of the droplets coming from the ceiling. Yeah. Yes, sort, sort of reminds me a little bit of um, of um, Big O, which I've been watching recently, where like uh, the protagonist is this, uh, I guess this uh, Bruce Wayne like figure or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, the story is basically that everybody uh, has lost uh, the memory of what happened uh, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so he just move, moves uh, he just moves into a bank and uh, mm-hmm. an abandoned bank and makes it um, it, it, um into his uh, his home and conveniently it comes with a butler uh, who doesn't mm-hmm. remember why he saves uh, him and uh, a giant robot? <laughs> because why not? well, the creators, um, the studio that made Big O is the same that animated Batman the animated series. So maybe that's why. Really? Okay. Yep. I didn't know that. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, of the of the costumes, which. Uh, the crazy, crazy lady costumes that uh, the woman wears. Were there any ones that you thought uh, looked okay, or were they all just crazy? Sorry, can you repeat? Sorry, uh, of the of the um, I, I guess costumes which uh, are the woman... uh, the craziest. Um, I don't know because they were very colorful, but not too crazy. Again, they gave me that feeling that she was like dressing like a geisha almost. There was a very nice one when she went to the um, uh, all flooded basement. It was like look, it was looking almost like a butterfly, and even um, um, I don't know what she was wearing on her face. If it was like mascara or something else, she had all different powders, different colors, and they felt a little bit like those of um of a butterfly so it was kind of nice it was weird and nice yeah i i think the, the weirdest ones um were like when on her hair like she had those um uh, uh, uh those wrapping um uh, plastic wrappings uh, which you can pop um uh, mm-hmm. in her hair and yeah <laughs> yeah um, and the other uh, other um, other one I think was um, when she sort of uh, dressed as a cat or whatever for mm-hmm. to yeah play with... when when they find yes yeah when the cat then runs away and she has like cat footprints on her face <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that. Um... That the little cars, uh, uh, that, that sorry, that the guitar, the blue guitar, probably mm-hmm. belonged to the sister because uh, it was on a sh- uh, on a shrine along with uh, yeah. the little blue cars. Mm-hmm. So it is yeah. probably like that. Um, I guess uh, um, the most m- movie-like thing which happened, I thought, was was when um. She started to pretend to be, uh, like to to basically to escape from herself. She started to pretend to be, 
her own sister and, and apparently yeah. yeah and apparently it's revealed that this was not even the first time because um, mm-hmm. um w- w- we see a flashback one of the only flashbacks in the movie yeah with, with the man with uh, with the eye patch and the curly hair um and <coughs> with that with that said i think uh, i think i've said everything that i have to say about this movie uh, how about you kiasmo Oh, I think there's nothing much to add. Um, I think this one of the issues I've I've got with it is a little bit cryptic when it comes to some of the symbols. But um, still, it's well crafted, and it's quite a looker. It's quite nicely shot. It's quite interesting when they show these, uh, like for example, the first time. They go to the flooded um, basement. It's quite interesting. So no, I'd say it's a. Uh, I enjoyed it. It's not for everyone, I'd say, but some of the scenes for sure are stunning and memorable. Mm. And now I think I think uh, um, the only live action by Anno that we have watched no um at, at least the old live action so i i would mm-hmm. put I, I i put the stuff like shin godzilla and afterwards uh, in a <laughs> in a separate category um mm-hmm. though i guess you could also put the um the 30 minute uh, student tokusatsu uh, ultraman movie that he made um, back in university as well in that section um <laughs> I guess I'm mostly thinking of um, of the post Eva. Oh, I'm depressed, so I'm going to make live action. <laughs> uh, so I, I so I think the only one left uh, for with those that you ha- you haven't watched is um, Love and Pop. Uh, I mean, we might uh, we might at some point later later on uh, yeah, do, sure. do a rewatch of that. And uh, yeah, with that said. Uh, 